Now, one of the hottest things that I saw at Intel Innovation 2023 is Intel is getting aggressive, very, very aggressive with their Flex GPUs products for both VDI and machine learning. On the VDI side, there's not gonna be a subscription fee or a license model or anything like that. They're just gonna sell you the hardware, which is extremely disruptive for where we are now. Competing products require ongoing subscriptions and they are ludicrously expensive. So I'm actually gonna try to get my hands on these and what I saw was pretty exciting. So uh, let's take a closer look. My trip to Intel Innovation 2023 and this video are made possible by sponsorship from Intel. My opinion and my thoughts on this, however, remain my own. I'm here with Landon from Intel, and we're gonna talk SRIOV virtual desktops and the Intel Flex 140 GPUs. These are the server-side GPUs that I've mentioned in other videos, and they've got a pretty killer demo here. So why don't you walk us through it? Sure, uh, what we have here today is we have uh, a couple of Flex 140 GPUs that are uh, set up so that we can show the difference between what a, um, a virtual machine is like when you have it hardware accelerated versus not hardware accelerated. Um, and then we have, uh, you know, we were talking about our licensing model where we don't have a per user license or a subscription. You know, you just buy our hardware, you get it and it works. The, the idea here is that you put a bunch of these in a server and this is a GPU and a server, but it's made for remote clients. There's no output or anything like that. But the reason that you do that is because you can access hardware encoding and hardware acceleration. Even if you're not playing back a movie, the visual display that is an application running on the server is sent to the client in a compressed, efficient, low latency format. And so the user experience is demonstrably better. That's right. So this is actually running in a server that uh, I have back in Oregon and then we're streaming all of that in a compressed format back to these thin clients that are, that are uh, here with us in San Jose. So, so today we support, um, I'm actually showing this demo, it's running uh, ESXi version 8.0.2. VMware. Yeah, v VMware, yeah. And then uh, we support Ubuntu as well. Um, yeah, so let me show you the actual demo here today. So, you know, what, what I have is I have uh, on the left hand side over here. This is your traditional VM that you would have that would not have any GPU hardware acceleration. And you know, as Wendell, you know, he moves the globe around, you can see it's not Pretty a super, chunky. not a super smooth experience. But when you hardware accelerate that with a flex GPU, you know, it's much more smooth. It's kind of what a user would expect when they're, you know, using Google Earth on their, their client. And same thing over here, you know, I've got, I've got Blender, right? So Blender, I'm gonna just move this around. And this, once again, the left here, this is not GPU accelerated. So I'm gonna move the mouse around and it is doing stuff, give it a second. If, if you wanna experience this for yourself, all you gotta do is uninstall your graphics driver yeah. and you'll have the same experience. Yeah. yeah, and then, you know, on our Flex GPU, it's nice and smooth. But what's interesting, let's see if it's trying to me when I do this, let's pull this up. You notice my uh, CPU utilization didn't spike, but you know when I, when I did this on my CPU only VM, you can see how my CPU utilization spiked up to 100%. Because the CPU has to do the rendering. Exactly. So you know what does this allow you to do? You know, let's say I had uh, four uh, V CPUs allocated to each of my VMs. Uh, it's not a great experience for my users if it's using 100% of the CPU to do that 3D rendering. Um, and you know, I'm also eating a ton of my system, uh, my server system resources. So if I actually add a flex GPU in, this guy right here is only running on two vCPUs and you can see the, the CPU utilization was still much lower. So that allows me to increase my existing VM density too. So I could even add a flex GPU into an old server uh, and you know, increase my VM density over and give my users a better experience than, than what they have today. I would go so far as to say that if you're doing VDI in your organization today and you don't have some type of graphics acceleration, you are literally and figuratively doing it wrong. <laughs> okay, and then uh, you know, the other, last thing I wanna show is uh, you, know, you can hook up multiple displays. So what we have here, this is one thin client that is actually powering four displays. And like, you know, while, while we're doing this, I have one video decoding here. 
I can start another video decoding over here. So we have multiple videos decoding. Kiosk is running off of VDI. <laughs> Plot twist. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, I, I have my GPU resources down here and I could be doing stuff in Excel as well. You know, all of this is hardware accelerated and it's, it's smooth, it's good, it's a great experience. If the VDI side doesn't tickle your fancy, there's also the Red Hat integration. You see, Intel has a device management plugin that would let you seamlessly shift between uh, VDI type solutions and machine learning type solutions. You could go back and forth on the OpenShift platform. And we know that the Flex 140, Flex 170 GPUs, their, their desktop counterparts, the A770, uh, that uh, Level 1 has already been working on off-label uses for the A770 that is around sharing multiple, uh, having multiple virtual machines share resources of a single GPU. Officially sanctioned and fully supported in Linux open environments, Hyper-V as well, but also more exciting coming news. I'm gonna try to get my hands on some of this hardware. I'm gonna compose it into my new liquid fabric, but that was really exciting for Intel Innovation 2023, and uh, I can't wait to get my hands on some actual real hardware and explore this further, because this could be extremely disruptive for VDI. I'm here with Eric from Intel. Hello. And we're gonna take a look at Red Hat OpenShift, but Red Hat OpenShift for AI, but also how easy it is to move back and forth between CPU and GPU inferencing on the new Intel platforms. And also, it's a, it's a Flex 140 demo. I'm all about the Flex GPUs and uh, some off-label uses of those, and it's really exciting to see them in a real-world use case sort of scenario here, so hello. Hello. So, I'm showing Red Hat OpenShift Data Science, and as mentioned, I've got a Flex 140 card. This card has eight XE, car, eight XE cores per GPU for a total of 16. That also means with two GPUs, you get twice as many transcoding units. It supports the AV1 video codec, which is the open source alternative, the H.265. We also have the Flex 170. Now this isn't in my demo, but this is 32 XE cores for one single GPU. So we also support 31 virtual functions per GPU. So on this card, you get 62 versus 31 on this one. Now, shifting over to OpenShift, what I'm actually showing is our integration into Red Hat OpenShift using our Intel device plugins operator. If you look at the different installed operators on OpenShift, the IDPO is where we are running all of our upstream device plugins to expose Intel accelerators. Currently, we support Intel GPUs, the Flex series, and Intel Software Guard extensions, which is the uh, Enclave page crash, the encrypted memory, where you can run your applications in that's been around for a few years. This will expose the memory resources. But I've got a demo coming up of the secure Enclave stuff, and it is really cool what Intel has in their software center that you can just download and start using immediately. And it plugs right into OpenShift. This is Intel's device plugin operator plugin for OpenShift to make it as easy as possible. It, exactly. That's exactly what we're doing. Now, within Red Hat OpenShift Data Science, I have these different OpenVINO notebooks. And if you look across, you'll see I have one that says CPU, one that says GPU. And if you scroll up just a little bit, I'll see if I can find it. It's always hard to find. To switch between running a model on CPU versus GPU, it's as easy as just changing this G to a C and this G to a C, recompile the model and rerun it. Now, I'm not going to run through the model, but I just ran through it so you can see there's a trailing edge of my GPU usage of one of my GPUs. There's two GPUs that are actually on the Flex 140. One of them ran the workload, and my CPU went up just a little bit. If I were to rerun the same workload, I'm running a 30 CPU container. You would see all 30 CPUs shoot straight to the top. This is really, really exciting because this same kind of thing is also available in Intel's Dev Cloud that they just announced. Well, launch, they kind of launched a long time ago, but they kind of didn't, but it's sort of getting some new stuff. Dev Cloud is where it's at from Intel to be able to play with this kind of stuff immediately, but you can also just deploy it in your own OpenShift container and on your own hardware, and you're ready to go. Did I mention these are certified device plugins? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. That does make a difference because just to make sure. nobody ever got fired or nobody ever got fired for buying certified hardware. So we actually have a team that validates and certifies the driver for each OpenShift release, each major OpenShift release. That's what you're paying for. Well, we don't charge. <laughs> the Red Hat support, yes. to be clear. The Red Hat support. I'm here with Jordan from MyTech. Hi, I'm Jordan Leong from MyTech, Tien Computer. We're going to take a look at some chassis that are set up for Sapphire Rapids 4th generation. Tell us about MyTech. 
Okay, so uh, MyTech was founded by a former Intel engineer. And uh, in 1978, he left the US and went back to Taiwan to found his own uh, business. And many years later, many decades later, MyTech is now an $80 billion company. They make a lot of servers. The Thunder HX S5652. This chassis is pretty interesting because the drives are on the sides. Look at this. Yes. They put 24 three and a half inch drives in 2U. I need this for my home lab. <laughs> up to uh, NVMe speed scoop. Yeah. Oh, up to NVMe. Wow. Yeah, exactly. And it's oh, yeah. If you put them, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's so we nice. have a we have a card right there. If you put two of them, you get NVMe here, NVMe there. Call it a day. That's so, pretty cool. It is pretty cool. So you can mix and match if you wanted to have two and a half inch drive EDSFF. Maybe someday. Someday. <laughs> Maybe someday. Uh, and it's a single socket Sapphire Rapids platform today, but drop in ready for Emerald Rapids tomorrow. This looks to me like Intel DSG, but wait a minute, you guys were doing DSG the whole time. Yes, that is correct. So pretty much what it was with MyTech, uh, MyTech was the ODM for Intel DSG products. So what had happened was we were always providing the L6 versions uh, to L6 for Intel, then they make it to the L9 to the racks. Now for people that don't know DSG, like what is that, what problem is that solving? So DSG is the data center solution group, so pretty much uh, if you want hyperconverged, if you want uh, HP or HPC, uh, they actually accepted or they made the servers for that. So the ultimate in VDI servers. <laughs> you got to get the flex GPUs. <laughs> so pretty much right now we have the two servers uh, on display. We have the Fox Free Pass, which is the dual Intel Sapphire Rapids. We also have the Node Server, which is the four U or two U, four nodes on display but it was very modular. You could do a 2U2 node as well, which happened to have like the PCIe acceleration and GPU acceleration. So this chassis could be 2U2 node or 2U4 node, just depending on the density that you're going for, memory, single socket, dual socket. Yes, so it's gonna be always dual socket when it came to Intel, especially on these lines itself. Uh, future platforms will be maybe changing over to the single socket, but as of right now, Intel has always been dual socket. Denali Pass. Yes, the Denali Pass. Nice. So, and it's also available in both air-cooled and water-cooled solutions. That looks like it's perfect for uh, Flex 140. Two Flex 140 GPUs per node, bunch of compute. This would be really high-end uh, VDI setup. It was set up uh, mainly for management itself. But then there's nodes, there's a GPU node as well, which is a 2U high, so you get 2U2 node and you can put two, uh, two uh, full height, full width GPUs per. And then on top of that, the later, the later technology of OEM modules. All right, so pretty much what this one is, is the our B7129, the tie-in server itself. It's a GPU server. So it is equipped with a daughter board on top, which could uh, put 10 GPUs in it. That is a crazy amount of PCIe slots. Look at that. Exactly. Top of that, it still has the OS, uh, the OCP 3.0 slot too, so you get the networking to go with that as well. All right, so I can put 400 gig ethernet and run a bunch of GPUs on a dual socket platform that is ready to go for fifth gen Intel Xeon scalable. Exactly. So you've also got room for FPGAs in this chassis in the front or other PCIe peripherals, not GPUs, because GPUs don't make sense. You could probably do RAID controllers here, the Broadcom cards would probably work well, but yeah, FPGAs plus GPU plus networking plus I mean, it's all uh, PCIe storage. They're using PLX, so you get the full lane connectivity between GPUs. So you can do inter-GPU memory sharing in this, in this chassis, if that's your thing. That's, that's, that's actually really hard to find chassis that have this kind of a configuration directly to the CPU with the full uh, PCIe connectivity. I managed to find Keoxia at the Intel Innovation, and they've got their Flash products, which of course are ubiquitous in the data center, but also, They've got the new CXL module flash as well and an EDSF form factor. I'm Whittle, this is Level 1. This has been Intel Innovation 2023. I'm going to be sprinkling content from this event throughout a whole bunch of videos. Be sure to check that out. Be sure to check out my video on the Intel Secure Enclave as well because it's like SSL certificates, but for programs. And you never actually give somebody a decrypted program. I think this is actually a really cool thing. It's a lot better alternative than something like DeNuvo, but as a developer, you can also protect your applications cryptographically 
in a way that is way less onerous on the end users than something like Denuvo. But we'll talk about that in another video. We'll talk about CXL. There's a lot of things that we need to talk about. But Emerald Rapids is coming in hot December 14th. Ah, I can't wait. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums.